Well, our next guest has made childhood dreams her everyday reality. Catherine Benel Pegg is a true Aussie trailblazer. Earlier this year, she broke new ground, becoming the first astronaut under the Australian flag. Part of the driving force is wanting to help create concrete steps forward in human knowledge and discovery. It's a move that's seen the director of Space Tech at the Australian Space Agency go from the engineer working on space to the astronaut planning to be in space. And there's so much to learn. We've learned about power, command and data handling, GNC, life support systems, emergency procedures and more. Now she's swinging by the desk to fill us in on all things out of this world. And we're going up straight down. <laughs> Woo! It's like sitting on the roof. It was totally fine. Would you please welcome Catherine Benel Pay! couple of months since you graduated been like? Oh, it's so wonderful to be here. Um, it's been such pinch me stuff having just graduated an as an astronaut, better yet an Aussie astronaut. And I've since, you know, done the latest round of medical and fitness tests, worked with Aussie researchers to get them working in human space flight, moved my family back across the world and caught this Sydney flu that's going around. So oh, it's been gosh. mostly fun. Do you yeah. get to wear this outfit all the time now? Whenever I want. It's very comfortable. Oh, There's lots I love of pockets. It. I know? love it. <laughs> and what is the actual process, pardon my ignorance, to going from this point graduating to like maybe getting to space? So once you graduate from basic astronaut training like I did, you're an astronaut and it means you're space flight ready to be assigned a mission to space, to the space station or even beyond to the moon. And what you do while you wait for a mission assignment is you keep current, so you keep up your foreign languages, your health and fitness, you go forward with more spacewalk training, robotic training, flight training, field medical training, there's lots to do. So, but yeah. So you're obviously extremely talented and you've worked really hard to get into your position so you can get to go to space. Do you get annoyed when rich idiots buy their way there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that there's a place for that. You know, a lot of people when they go to space, they, they become advocates for the environment right. on Earth and the money that they spend is investment into new technology yeah. we can use in space that government don't have to pay for. You can say you're annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you they get three minutes, we get six minutes. <laughs> How do you feel then about, like, space movies? Because when we watch space movies, it's almost science fiction. But for you, is it kind of annoying because there's inaccuracies, you know? That's not how gravity works or whatnot. Do you get... I love watching inaccurate space movies because uh -huh. I'm a really annoying person that points out all the problems. What's the worst one you've seen? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that. The best one I've seen though is The Dish for sure. I spent oh. my year 10 work experience where I went to The Dish, which was amazing. Yeah, Are you a Trekkie or a Star Wars fan? Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> Have what I about... divided the audience? <laughs> what, about, what about Interstellar? Is that almost accurate or not? Well, we will see. Oh. Oh. Good answer. Spoilers. <laughs> I um, read this incredible story today that um, there's a space suit that can recycle the astronaut's urine into drinking water. Have you heard about that? Yeah, it's like a steel suit from the Dune movie almost. But, mm. you know, on the space station today, we actually say that yesterday's coffee is tomorrow's coffee, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's already recycled up there in the space station, but not number twos. They become shooting stars. Oh. But is that <laughs> Haley's comment then. <laughs> but actually, this suit, if it works, will be incredible for lots of applications on Earth. Can you imagine having drinking water at your disposal, not having mm. to go to the bathroom for all sorts of applications? Right now up there, though, you use nappies. They're called mags. They were invented in the 80s for spacewalks and things. But they've actually been what's driven forward, like adult diapers in hospitals, better nappies for babies, and all wow. sorts of things for hikers so they don't pollute the environment when they go out there. So another example of, you know, space <laughs> Helping life on Earth. Well, um, speaking of um, space, you know, pushing for technology, uh, you're working with the European Space Agency and also Lego currently yes. uh, because they've made some Lego bricks out of meteorite dust. Um, I mean, are you excited about this? What, what, what else can you tell us about it? It's very cool. When I was training at the European Space Agency, their, their lab there where they have a lot of tech, they had the idea to make Lego bricks out of the meteorite dust and lunar regolith simulant, and they work. They actually work together. And the amazing thing is that that might actually be useful because when we go back to the moon to stay and do science there, we need to live off the, the land, mm. do a bit of Lego, build some structures. Do they and, hurt to yeah. step on as well? Yeah. <laughs> well, less, because you're not as heavy, but it would be better in zero gravity. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Right. Yeah. I'd get you in the eye. But, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Lego and babies floating around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think 
you can take any babies <laughs> up there, mate. No, fair enough. Yeah. And you've got a special little figurine, I think. You've got a figurine as well. Somebody huh? made one of me, which was very nice, and sent a photo through. But oh, I don't have cute. a special one. But, yeah, it's very exciting, the collaboration with Lego. You're is... the real thing. You don't need one. <laughs> yes. uh, well, if you would like to meet Catherine, she'll be in Sydney's Pitt Street Mall Lego store. It's a great store. On Tuesday, all the info's on our website. Catherine Bennell-Pegg, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Yeah.